Well, oh, hello everyone and uh, welcome to The Connection. This is our opportunity every week to take 10 minutes and uh, interview the preacher. And uh, so let me introduce Nathan. Some of you have met Nathan already. Nathan and his brother Aiden are interning with us for the next couple of months. They uh, are part of the church up in Ingwavuma, the sons of uh, Neil and Michelle. So Nathan is going to be doing the interview. And remember, the point of the connection is to connect the sermon we preach on Sunday with the realities of everyday life. So Nathan, great to have you with us. You're going to be interviewing me. So over to you. All right. So I wasn't able to catch the sermon, unfortunately. So um, this is all going to be new for me, which is going to be good. So we're going to see if you're actually doing your job in this, in this session and Fair getting enough. it across to me. <laughs> okay. Um, so first off, what was the title of your sermon? And what, what, what uh, scripture did it revolve around? Brilliant. Well, as you know, we're doing uh, that series called uh, Acts 1-8 about uh, experiencing the Holy Spirit. You, of course, know what Acts 1-8 is. Why don't you quote it for us? <laughs> but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you'll be my witnesses. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. That's what the whole journey has been about. You know, it's like discovering the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can live powerful lives for Jesus. Now, in this week's uh, sermon, I spoke about how we can pray spiritful prayers and how actually praying in the Spirit fills us with the Spirit. Now, for me, well, let me read a quick scripture. This comes from Acts uh, chapter 4. It's a great chapter. I'm just going to pull out one or two uh, verses. Peter and John were arrested. They op were facing opposition. They were thrown in jail. They were interrogated. They were threatened. And then as soon as, soon as they were released, they gathered together. Acts chapter 4 verse 24. When they heard the report, all the believers lifted their voices together in prayer to God. First response. The church gathered together and they prayed. And they prayed this amazing prayer. And then right at the end in verse 31, it says, After this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. That's what we were about. Spirit full prayer. Okay. Hey, if all the churches, if all churches could do that. If all like, the believers could do oh. that. Whew. Okay, so another question is, what is the good news promise of this sermon? Um... I suppose that the, the real good news is, well, let me start with the bad news. <laughs> bad news is every believer is going to face opposition. Yeah. This was the early church. They were doing exactly what God called them to do. And yet they still faced opposition. You're going to face opposition. I'm going to face opposition. The good news is that we have the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I mean, I can imagine they were shaking with fear because of the opposition. Yeah. But after this prayer... They were filled with boldness and the room was shaking. I mean, it's just kind of yeah. from them shaking because of the threats of the world. Now the world was shaking and they were full of boldness. That's the good news. We have the power of the Holy Spirit who can equip us to face opposition. And as we pray spirit-filled prayers, we get full of the Spirit and overcome. Good stuff. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so why isn't, why isn't everyone already living in the promise? Sure. Why isn't everyone uh, praying spirit-filled prayers? That's a, that's a good question. Why aren't you praying spirit-filled prayers as an automatic response to opposition? Um, well, maybe there's a couple of reasons. One, some people aren't spirit-filled. Yeah. I mean, what this word tells us as well is if the apostles had to be filled with the Spirit again, it means all of us have to be filled with the Spirit, and not just filled once, but continually filled. I think one of the biggest problems is many Christians, if you could see the fuel lights on their spirituality, might be running on empty. And, yeah. and so there's so little of the Holy Spirit inside of you that it's not natural to want to pray in the Spirit. I think um, another reason sometimes is, is, is we can be so quick to just be pragmatic. I can solve this. I can sort this. I can Google. I can phone my dad. I can, and we don't turn automatically to the Holy Spirit we just are so programmed to look around to our experience or to the world. And I think maybe one more reason is, uh, I suppose some people just don't believe in the power of prayer enough. Yeah. Haven't got the testimony or the experience of seeing God work through prayer. I mean, if you had a track record of God answered this prayer and this prayer and this prayer, then your natural response yeah. was pray again. So, so I think a lack of experiencing the power of prayer is why some people don't automatically pray as a first response. Yeah, even in my own life, I only started praying a lot in my, even though I've been a Christian for many years and only been praying a lot in the last 
three, four years. I've only realized the power of prayer. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so what adjustments, steps of faith and repentance should we be making? Sure. What should we be doing differently? Um, I, th I think firstly, prioritizing prayer in the Holy Spirit, because we have this gift of the Holy Spirit. I think probably the biggest one is to recognize God has given us, I'm giving you a tool of how to face opposition. And the tool is praying in the Holy Spirit. So I think the biggest adjustment is our thinking adjustment to realize this should be our priority. When opposition comes, we pray. That's just the way it is. I think um, probably an, another adjustment is, is in our prayer, many people are shopping list prayers. You know, prayer means take my shopping list to God. God bless the family and the dogs and the church and da-da. And yet for them, as they prayed, the purpose of prayer was, was more God change us. And we see as they began to pray in the Spirit, what the Holy Spirit does is He reminds you. We are prophetic people. And the Holy Spirit reminded them of what God was doing, which completely changed their perspective. They were thinking, should we be running for our lives? And all of a sudden, they reminded of Psalm 2. And Psalm 2 says, why do the nations rage? I'm established, my king. And suddenly they realized, actually, this is God at work. We can overcome this. So I think an adjustment is to stop doing all the talking in prayer, <laughs> doing more of the listening in prayer, yeah. asking the Holy Spirit for His leading and for His guiding. And then I think just raise our expectations. Mm. Actually believe God, the Spirit of God's inside of me. I'm trusting that as I pray, you're going to be empowering me again. Yeah, I think that's, that's one thing we all need to learn yeah. is just to listen to the Holy yes. Spirit, what the Holy Spirit wants us, mm. wants us to pray yeah, instead of what our own hearts want to pray. Okay, uh, last question. Tell us about your personal journey with the, the promise. Sure, my personal journey. Um, honestly, I, I haven't been a natural prayer in terms of fall on my knees and pray. I mean, I kind of conversations with the, the Lord throughout the day. But my journey has been discovering how I pray best. And I pray best walking. I find when I'm kneeling at my bed, my mind is going off here, there, and, and I'm back to sermon writing. So I've learned the discipline now of, of I need to go walking. Literally 20-minute walk around the block, just me and the Holy Spirit, praying in the Spirit for me. And, and it's as I pray in the Spirit, that's when I feel God beginning to speak to me, reminding me of things. And so I think that the journey for me has been, I enjoy conversing with the Holy Spirit through the day, but but powerful prayer for me happens when I walk. I think it was Enoch who walked with the Lord yeah. and then God took him up. I'm that it. I want to be an Enoch walking with the Lord. And uh, so that for me has been the biggest discovery for my journey anyway. All right. What about you? Uh, I find I often, often word, uh, I pray a lot when I'm listening to music. Okay. I put on some, I've got a playlist on my cell phone yeah. and of songs that I've found that I really connect with the Spirit, and then I'll put those on, and then I'll talk to the Spirit, and I'll listen to what God's yeah. saying. I've also, I've got a place back at my parents' house, mm. and um, uh, it's a hammock, and it's over the view at my there parents' house, go. and then I just sit there and I listen. Brilliant, eh? Um, Brilliant. And those are, like, those are some of the methods I've learned over the years. Awesome. But, so I wonder if I can leave you with a couple of questions. Maybe that's a first question. What's your journey been like uh, in prayer? But here are three quick questions. Question number one, what would you love to get out of spiritful prayer? Maybe we can chat about that just now. What would you like to get out of it? I mean, for me, I want that strengthening, that empowering, that new perspective. What is it that you want to get out of prayer? Question number two, which of the problems listed might be keeping you from connecting more with the Holy Spirit in prayer? Now, don't forget, you can download some notes. I've jotted down a couple of these notes, so you can download them from the link below. And uh, there's a couple of those problems listed. What might be holding you back from growing in prayer in the Holy Spirit? And then question number three, what practical steps could you take to grow in spirit-filled prayer? Maybe you need to discover, are you a prayer walker? Are you a music listener to what can you do practically to grow your life of prayer in the Holy Spirit. Brilliant. Well, that's it for today, Nathan. Thanks. Nathan will be back next week and uh, interviewing the preacher. Let's make it real, but let's continue to grow as we connect the dots between God's Word and the reality of our lives. God bless everyone. Hope it was helpful. Bye for now.